Presentation by Castleberry High School on Traffic Warrant Study. I understand Mr. Ivy and some of the students are here. If you'd come down. Yeah, Mayor, as they come down, I want to thank the Castleberry High School and Mr. Ivy. This has been a project for their class at Castleberry High School. I want to thank uh, our Transportation and Public Works Department for also being a part of this. And these students actually have done this in their class, and you'll see today some of their critical thinking, and they make a very compelling case for the item that they're about to discuss. So, again, congratulations to Castleberry High School, Mr. Ivy, uh, and I want to thank our TPW department as well as Castleberry High School and the Castleberry ISD staff for uh, this project. It really is uh, using uh, the classroom interactively with critical reasoning, with writing, and with advocacy, and you'll see that tonight. So thank you it's again. It's great to see that happening because it'll hold you in good stead as you go out in the world. Before they begin, uh, just want to give you just a brief uh, reason why we are here. Um, this year, for our English two pre-AP students, they've gone through a process of blended learning in which while they're still in high school and it's not an early college program, they are running through a schedule that is pretty much just like college, three days in the classroom, direct teach with me, and then two days where they are off doing projects and developing things. This is, was the, this is the culmination of their second project uh, for the school year. Everything has been based on doing these type of projects to connect real world problems, real world solutions to an authentic audience and what more of an authentic audience can we have than you guys? So we want to thank you for having us here. And without further ado. Thank you. Before we start, I would like to thank you, Mayor Price, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, uh, City Manager, and the City Council members, especially Sal Espino, for inviting us to share our presentation with you today. As we as high school students, think this is a major problem that we should be addressed immediately. My name is Brianna Sims, and I am one of the project managers. Celeste Sanchez is to my right, and she's the other project manager. Starting on my right is Erica Perez, Dylan Petchy, Celeste Conchas, Daylin Resendez, Natalie Robles, Sydney Eads, David Ayala, and Frank Fimbres. I will now turn it over to Erica Perez, and she will tell you more about our argument. At the intersection of White Settlement and Churchill Road, there is a safety concern for both pedestrians and drivers due to the substantially high volume of vehicle traffic you may during want to pull those a certain peak hours. microphones down a little bit. Put the microphone down. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> In doing a traffic study, we saw that we did not meet any of the warrants for a traffic signal. However, the data that we did collect still arouses concern for a solution. Our solution was to install an RRFB, which stands for a rectangular rapid flashing beacon and a school zone because they make drivers aware of students crossing and the RRFB is available 24 seven for the community's benefit. Next slide, please. As can be seen on slide three, the RRFB is manually operated. A pedestrian crossing would have to push the button to signal the other beacon across the intersection to alert drivers of any pedestrians crossing the intersection, which Dylan will now speak about. Next slide, please. And each of you, as you come up, adjust the mic to your height so everyone yeah. can hear you. And I don't want to make you any nervous, but you're online on the city's website, and you're also on cable. <laughs> well, they did well in school. As you can see on slide four, we have maps as well as on pages five through eight of your traffic studies showing the intersection that we're talking about, which also shows an alleyway that goes behind the school that serves as a blind spot for people trying to avoid the intersection. On the top left of this screen, you can see a zoomed out map of the area, and on the top right, we can see a close-up map showing the movement of traffic in the area. Now I'll pass it to Celeste with our argument. Um, the location of concern will soon be going under new housing development. The housing development is consisting of 35 houses. In this situation, the level of concern has increased due to the fact that an average American family has two to three children. Um, not only are we focusing on the buildings, um, but as well as growing numbers within our high school. Next slide, please. Um, if we keep increasing like we have in the past years, we are predicted to be a new class, high school classification. 
With this, we will have more caution for pedestrians in the area as well as um, our athletic school athletic department. And now I will turn it in over to Daylin Resendez for more information about this topic. Casabury High School has activities that require students to cross the intersection of White Settlement Road and Churchill Road. The athletic department has over 136 girls that cross this intersection twice a week for workouts, and there are 150 boys who do the same. This is not only Castlebury High School, but also Irma Marsh Middle School with 93 girls and 145 boys. Also, Cross Country crosses this intersection at 5.30 in the morning, and at that hour, drivers don't expect to see pedestrians because the sun's not out yet and because school hasn't started. So an RRFB and a school zone would be beneficial and it would promote safety. Next slide, please. And now over to Natalie Robles. Information from Fort Worth's databases have concluded that there have been multiple incidents in the intersection, some of which have resulted in hospitalization of some individuals. Speed data has concluded that more than half of drivers, 58.2% of drivers to be exact, fail to comply with a speed limit of 35 miles per hour. Next slide, please. And now move to Sydney Eads. On page 16 of your traffic study, you can see on Tuesday that there was a jump in numbers. This was due to the basketball game that night. This is also expected to happen Tuesdays and Fridays during volleyball and football seasons. Also, the people moving into the new development trying to save gas may simply walk to the games or to the track to work out. By slowing down the traffic on White Settlement, we also reduce the speed to the turn on to Churchill, which will in turn keep the pedestrians on Churchill safer too. And now to David with vehicle data. From the data we collected, we transferred it into page 15 to 17 in our traffic study. As you can see in our graph, from 7 to 8 a.m. and from 3 to 4 p.m. are the busiest hours, and that's because of when school starts and ends. And I'll pass it to Frank from Brest. Our fix provides a safer uh, route for the athletic departments of the middle school and high school, as well as safety for the future residential uh, places coming in that area. As well as safety, it provides better traffic through the beacon, which warns about the upcoming school zone. And also, it has a long-term effect by having it there during non-school hours, so everyone's safe. Next slide, please. And now, we would like to ensure the safety of our fellow students, as well as community, me community members, with this solution. We are now available for questions. Mayor? Yes. Well, so, first of all, I want to commend you. This is an excellent citizen's presentation. Uh, this is one of, you know, this is even better than what most citizens would present to council. So let's hear it for the students for an outstanding presentation. <laughs> and just so I'm clear, your recommendation is for a rectangular rapid flash beacon, the, the uh, RRFB, as well as establishing a, a school zone. Is that correct? Yes. And then what would be the timeline as to when you would like that installed and what has <laughs> Uh, transportation and Public Works told you about how quickly they could get that installed. That's why they're here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Wurzig, Mr. how quickly Wurzig. could you get that? Uh, <laughs> come on down, our Transportation Public Works Director. Just while we're waiting on him, this is an English pre-AP class and they're using critical reasoning uh, to, to advocate and to, you, know, you see this report, they gave council a very thorough report. Uh, I agree with your recommendation, now we got to see if our TPW director can make this happen, so I want to put him on the spot. <laughs> Mr. Wurzig, if you want to come on down and... This is Doug Wurzig, our Transportation and Public Works Director. Thank you, Council Member. I was trying to get the staff that actually worked with the team to come down there. Well, they're they're more bashful than these guys are. Okay. <laughs> you guys are really good. Um, we've been working with them, and we have money in the 2014 bond program to... Uh, provide these types of improvements and uh, we'll order the equipment and it's probably about uh, eight to ten weeks uh, before we could uh, get it up. Do All we right. Have, uh, do we have any of these RRFBs in place? We have a couple. We have um, in the, where's Mr. Shingleton? In his district up on uh, Alta Vista at uh, Funnel by Timberland High School, we've uh, erected one of these as a, a similar type thing for the schools to cross, Are they especially during off, off peak. Yes, it works very well. So, it, yeah, 
it works. Uh, now, Mr. Wurzig, uh, why would you not recommend, why do the students not recommend a, a, a traffic signal? Is that because it slows down and backs up traffic, or what's the rationale for the beacon as opposed to a traffic signal? Um, I should let the students talk about <laughs> it, but uh, basically the, the volume warrants that the number of activities that occur out on that street uh, during that time period just didn't warrant that type of investment to adequately control the, the movement of pedestrians and vehicles, and uh, this is a nice device that actually takes its place and is there for the students, any other pedestrians, as well as warning the motorists that someone is ready to cross the street. And another location that we have, and Mr. Moon's ready to jump on me, is uh, over uh, on uh, um, Heritage Trace. We installed one of those for a school crossing also. Uh, that was what, three, four months ago, something like that, and, and accepted very well with the community. Thank you. Right. Well, let's hear it for the students again, and then the mayor of you and I and TPW will join the students for a photo. I have a question. Ms. Hold on, Bivens, Ms. Bivens has a question. Ms. Bivens has some comments. I'm, I'm pretty sure some of my other colleagues are gonna to wanna to commend you as well, but I wanna tell you what happens in my district when people complain about traffic bog downs, and these are adults, working adults. They will call and complain and say, we need a light here, we need a stop sign here. We want a speed bump here. But nobody has been willing to put in the work and the research and the study that you all did. And you just need to know that I'm so very proud to know students like you, so glad you came. It was an outstanding presentation and you could convince me to do anything on any day of the week if you come <laughs> like this. And so just thank you. I, I, there are great things ahead of you. That's gonna benefit you and this entire city as well. You make me so very proud. Thank you. It's very well done. It's very impressive. <laughs> and now you have to have your pictures made with us. So, Mr. Wright, can you come on down and uh, TPW and anyone else that's part of this project turn around and then we can get the mayor in here. And, uh, that way, the pillar. Tall people in the back, short people in the front. This is weird. And Sal, Sal. When you, when you finish that picture, can you turn them around so I can take one from up here too and show my folk how to make it happen? <laughs> Just Facebook Sal, it'll be that bad. It's Pilar will post it. <clears throat> All right, so right, here we go. Right here at Miss Bivens, where the green light is out. I'm going to put you guys on my Facebook page. Everybody look this way. I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, just look real good on the count of one, two, three. Thank you so much. And again, congratulations. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Great job. Good job. Thank you all.